Hey everyone, I'm Ace, and welcome to the Let's Talk About League podcast, the only podcast talking about everything LCUS. As always, I'm here with Sigtau Lord, and our special guest this week is the former top laner from two-time finalist Northern Storm, Shaken Not Stirred. How are you guys doing today? I could be better. Doing, doing fantastic. Good. Glad to hear it. Uh, this is uh, Split 3 Episode 1 for the podcast, um, and we'll be going through pr- pretty much split preview stuff uh, today. You guys excited? Uh, beyond excited. I- I'm excited to see uh, how this split goes compared to the previous splits. Yeah, lots of changes. Uh, seven teams this time, so each team plays six matches during the regular split. Um, we'll maybe see a little bit more distance between the top teams, unlike last split, where there were three teams that all could have gotten first place at the end there. Also, bye weeks and the split extending over 12 weeks uh, due to holidays instead of the normal seven, which really will uh, let patches impact it, I think. But yeah, yeah, there's think... a chance. There's a chance. It could happen. Yeah. I think with the split being so long, definitely people getting it able to adjust to the patches would be huge. Yeah, I think a lot of it also um, will have an impact. Schedule will have a large impact on it, too. If you ended up playing the really good teams at the start of the split or um, the the teams that haven't had any synergy at the beginning and can get some points off them, at the end of the split, you might really come and pay off. Not that you have uh, any control on that, right? I think the real game changer is going to be the off week. Uh, where teams are going to have to take time to make sure that they do something to fill that void of play together. Uh, it really puts a weight on the teams to keep that synergy for 14 days as opposed to seven. Yeah, definitely. Um, it also could be a benefit, right? If you have a whole week off, um, you're able to just get all your game practice all that time. Maybe put in a whole Sunday night of practice when you normally wouldn't be able to practice at all. Hey, maybe they could camp in Korea. <laughs> yeah, I mean, <laughs> you have two weeks, right? It's you know, more than enough time. I think they could walk there and then walk back in that time. <laughs> you could take a boat if they wanted it. I mean, if, if our players really valued it, they could get it. Yeah, if they actually had commitment. I've seen their budgets, folks. Yeah. I've seen their budgets. I know what they can spend. Yes, yes. Uh, can't divide that budget by the amount of players on the team. That's for sure. Um, but yeah, yeah. Uh, so the meta will definitely change based on patches. Um, it's hard to really say what the meta will be, in my opinion, to begin with, because there's so many new players and so many position swaps. Uh, I mean, well, last split, we did have the perennial, because it was right after the major rework. Correct mm-hmm. me if I'm wrong. The yeah. split two was immediately after the major rework, which played right into the to a lot of our players' play styles. So with the nerf that came to, is, came or is coming to mana, uh, it, could, it could be some big changes. Yeah, that's for sure. It should, uh, they're, they're claiming it's going to have a large impact on uh, wave clear majors, which is a lot of what we saw didn't see much assassins or anything like that but yeah um for the first time in lcus massive history we had a pick em. and uh we have some interesting results from that um of course there's seven teams this time uh the team with the least changes to it was option 12 um who kept three of their players and uh they, it seems like that was noticed by the players with the pickums. Ninety uh, percent of people think that option twelve is going to end up making the playoffs. That's a pretty large percentage. Uh, they, and there was some strong play uh, in those players that stayed: uh, Trufflesaurus, Prowler, Ashaway, all of them high-level performers. And with uh, adding already strong players from White Wolf Gaming. Uh, Lie and uh, from uh, TTL Menards, uh, one of the anchors of that team, really last split. Uh, it's going to be a force to be reckoned with. Yeah, yeah, I I agree also with keeping their top lane jungle 
and their support, the jungle and support already work together. So, you know, warding and getting vision together, they already know how each other work. And then top lane, when they're on the island, they can, you know, he's going to do well by himself. Um, but he can set up some ganks for the jungle as well. That and I'm I'm not gonna I'm not gonna talk bad about Jace, but I am very excited to see because Lai brought the Zill to that White Wolf game and comp, so I'm wondering if maybe he might be able to rub off some of that White Wolf synergy onto this option twelve. Which I, I mean, you, you guys were already pretty synergist last split, but we might be able to see some non-meta slave stuff because that's all you are. <laughs> hey, hey, I'm not a meta slave. I just am playing my seventh champion. It's fine. Well, when LeBlanc, you play every champion, everything you do is the meta. Oh, man, boy. Yeah, they're, they're a mid laner, and their new AD carry uh, definitely were the some of the best players on the teams that they came from, too. So, definitely no downgrades there. Um, the next two teams that the majority of people th think would make the playoffs are uh, Take the Lantern and Phoenix Rising, both with uh, around 60... 65% of the vote. Um, both of those teams are filled with veterans, uh, even though some of them have played both splits. Um, I personally think that Phoenix Rising is one of the shoe-ins for the finals, but I haven't seen their jungler play at all. Yeah, definitely could be. And uh, Port Swimmer. I've always talked highly of him. Incredible player. Alon Z, already gifted, proven himself with the Brawlers and Triple Strike. Uh, Amaya Chan, super strong performances with White Wolf Gaming. Uh, I, I think this is going to be one of those teams that's going to come out of the blue because it's it's none, none of the, the uh, players uh, are going to be used to these fresh faces. So uh, I, Phoenix is going to be something to look forward to. Yeah, I think uh, Phoenix has a good shot this, uh, this split. Uh, personally, playing with Spencer and Perry, the um, Port Swimmer, and the mid laner, they were on my Northern Storm team in the first split where we didn't drop a match. And they're both great players, very positive, and I think going with that and their support lane, their support Rob, they're going to have some good chemistry, and they're just going to... I think they're going to sneak into the playoffs just barely, but I think they'll make it. Yeah, it's, and it's always nice uh, with Hohenheim's mid lane pool. Uh, the rest of the players on his teams tend to just be able to play whatever they want. Uh, yeah. That's always a positive. Um, and then of the remaining teams, we'll, we'll just pop off with the last one that got Whoa, top whoa, four whoa. Hold on. Hold on. I can understand you being humble but I want to give a shout-out to some of these people who want to take the lantern because it's definitely worth analyzing. Uh, with Andy AoE, the guy is a machine. In the bot lane where he subbed in at the end of the last split for the championships, uh, he, he might have got a uh, championship watch instead of the belt, but it's still worth talking about. Uh, Lucky, dominating performer on Cowbell. Uh, you could have done better, Ace, but I understand. Uh, you, you, you're, you're working on it. What, what do you know about this Darian guy? Um, he was he was on the team with uh, Andy AOE in the first split, uh, the last place uh, Bruce City Brawlers team. Um, he took a split off, and he came back now. We're looking forward to playing together as five and getting some synergy in. None of us have really played together that much, though. What about this uh, Gregosaurus Rex? I mean, he's got a boss name right off the bat. <laughs> Yeah, no, good guy. Uh, looking forward to see how his playstyle works with uh, the rest of us as well. Well, you can keep going now. The important man's done talking. <laughs> um, so it just looks, based on the popular opinions, that more Cowbell will be the fourth team making it into the playoffs. 50% um, of the vote. The other ones were very close behind it, but yeah, um, that team has Shaden on it, um, who is one of the, one of the, if not the big carry on option twelve last split, um, and playing his off roll of eighty carry in cowbell, he'll be playing top lane, 
which will be fun to see, as, lo as well as having uh, Brandana, who was on more Cowbell the Split before, um, playing AD Carry. Well, this team already has my most synergist, uh, Split 2 most synergist bot lane in Brandana and Mr. Pig. I, I don't want to call them... Uh, I don't want to say that they're the uh, what's that movie? What's that movie, guys? Uh, Rush either Hour. way, uh, Rush Hour. Thank you, <laughs> Ace. That's synergy right there. Uh, with I don't want to say that they're our Rush Hour, but the amount of time that these guys have playing together just in LCUS time alone, probably more than any other team, any other two players that have played together, except maybe Arcane Soda uh, and uh, RTC, but uh, just. Incredible synergy, always fun to watch him. I'm very excited to see this. Plus, Hickey, who's joined us on the desk more than once, one heck of a guy, and I'm excited to see him. Yeah, no, it's good to see Hickey. Uh, I know that he filled in the support role for Triple Strike last split. I know he's more of a mid lane player, so it's good to see him be able to get back on a primary role. Um. But then we got some interesting results too, because we also asked the community who they thought would finish first through fourth and uh, make the finals. And uh, option twelve pretty much won all all four of those contests, being voted the most likely to get second, third, and fourth. But despite thir despite ninety percent of people thinking they'll make the playoffs. They only got one response for thinking that they'll take first place. So we'll see. Uh, I personally think they're going to be a great team, but let's, we'll see. All right. And so, uh, what about you two? Uh, I know that you submitted some results for the pick'em, uh, but do you have anything that you want to share about what you submitted? I won't. Uh talk exactly about what i submitted but i will tell you guys some inside info so make sure you write this down don't tell the feds team blitzkrieg is going to be a team to watch goon stomp showed his prowess the entirety of the last split being a dominating adc the entirety consistency is this guy's middle name uh split one one of the best subs that we've ever had uh just he's gonna be the carry that this team is gonna need uh and plus you look at this you've got he's got his same support already have the synergy in place. Huge, who's already been such a dynamic force, class two splits on Team Take the Lantern. Chaney, one of the best jungles that we've ever seen. The guy just stays on task the entire time, and he was a cornerstone for White Wolf Gaming in split two. Great Bitter Voden, he showed incredible top lane presence these past two splits, and I think this team might be the one that, that could get him to the championship. Yeah, that's for sure. Uh, another team that you that we didn't talk about earlier, but you can't really talk about the LCUS without saying, is uh, White Wolf Gaming. They top three, uh, both splits in the playoffs. Um, crazy synergy. Uh, they have a little bit more change up this split, but they are having an amazing bot lane coming back. Well, coming back to rejoin the LCUS with uh, Salt Salute and Tilted Snorlax, who were on Take the Lantern in the first split. Um, and then the, the uh, I'm going to say the synergy of the top three players that have been playing together for a very long time. Uh, that's going to be a, a team to watch, too. Oh, yeah, most definitely. And if they bring any of that chaos that they brought to split two into split three just with those two players, uh, it's going to work well. I think it would do well for Salsa, Tilted, and Primed to maybe listen to some of these comps that White Wolf's going to pitch at them. Maybe play ball with that. Yeah. Um, and, right, like Northern Storm, too. I don't think any of the teams in this in the league this split couldn't win it. Um, Northern Storm seems to be overlooked a little bit just since they have so many new players coming in. Um, three of the five players haven't played in the LCUS yet. Um, and one returning from last split and one sub. Uh, but no, that's a team of very skilled players. They're going to well, have a shot. It's not, just, it's not just skilled. They've got surprise on their side. <clears throat> Excuse me, folks. Sorry, I'm choking on how excited I am. Whew. Infinite during split two. 
despite what he is ranked in game, was a dominant performer in every lane matchup that he went into. He was one of the anchors for Northern Storm and an off carry to Goon Stomp that allowed they, they gave him that flexibility. I remember the play that I knew split three he would have his championship opportunity was when he went with the uh fizz flank in bot side river it was he went in 1v5 four coming in for the flank he not only did he walk away scotch clean but i think he got a double or triple in that it was beautiful and he's gonna lead this team i'm looking forward to it yeah no it's gonna be great um yeah i'm I'm going to be cheering for Northern Storm. A little biased since I was, I was on their team for the last two splits. But Big Tau Infinite is is a great player. He, he really knows his limits, when to go in, when to stay out with the Fizz, and I'm hoping he can lead the team how they were led the last couple of splits and bring them to the finals once again. Cool. So, do we want to give a little spice and who we think might win? I I will start. I think Phoenix it probably will probably will win this split. I think I they're... I personally voted for Blitz. Okay. Uh, I'm going to I'm going to say option 12 with an asterisk. If if we can see Menards and Lie, uh mainly Lie uh, who's played so well these past two splits on White Wolf? Who've made it to the finals? If he can rise to the occasion, which I'm more than more than I more than believe that he's capable. If he can put this team on his back uh, in those mid lane carry times when it's time for them to put that pressure, then they're going to make it to the championships, no problem. Uh, I put it on his back, but I'm I'm going with twelve. Nice, good to hear. Well, we'll see uh, which one of us is right and. 12 weeks, which is totally a short amount of time. And we'll definitely remember who we picked. Um, <laughs> but with that, uh, I think the patch, this recent patch that came out last week, is going to have a pretty big impact on uh, everything. Um, tons of changes to mages. Uh, I really getting some nerfs, stuff like that. Uh, two assassin mid laners coming back, which is really exciting for me. Uh, LeBlanc and Ari got some changes. LeBlanc went back to how she used to be. Um, and Ari got slightly re reworked back to how she was with her charm acting like Deathfire's Grasp. Um, we haven't seen much aggression in the mid lane and I'm excited to see if anyone decides to pull out stuff like that. Um, and then Irelia. Have either of you seen Irelia much? Not really. I've seen... Of what I've played, I've seen a lot of her. <laughs> um, she's... I've played her once or twice. So far, I haven't got enough enough time in to really test her limits. But she's extremely mobile. Um, being able to dash to occasionally two people at a time or dash to someone twice, her mobility and damage is just ridiculous. And um, With Conqueror... Being one of the big runes, I would not be surprised if we see her picked or banned in almost every single game. No, I agreed. Uh, last split, we didn't have very many people playing aggressive top lane, but I know that three or four uh, people, three or four of the seven, have personally talked to me about playing Irelia. So I can, that's going to be crazy. Um, Nautilus got huge buffs, but... Uh, with CB Hickey moving out of the support role, the only person that really plays Nautilus is uh, Great Beard of Odin, and that's top lane. But that'd be cool if it gets pulled out. Very large cooldown re reduction on his uh, anchor. But... I, I played a game with him because I do play support Nautilus, not a lot, but it does come in if I want to play a tank support and still have that engage option. And I can tell you at the at the tier one queue. It is a completely different champion. Uh, you 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 really do you take a, we we take for granted what that four seconds gives you uh, in time, in terms of cooldown. Um, yeah. Also, with, with that, if he goes onto a wall, I believe it's reduced by half. Mm -hmm. So escaping, also going onto a wall, pulling himself, that'll be two extra seconds 
but still, big differences. And I'd, I'd love to see some Nautilus in top lane. I'm a big fan of Nautilus, and hope he gets played. Yeah, uh, I definitely hate the champ when I was playing AD Carry. <laughs> like, you know, anyone that can just point and click you, um, it's awful to play verse. Uh, but, yeah. What else do you uh, think is going to be going on in top lane? Uh, what do you think about Tom Kench? Um, I know they changed his E where he doesn't have the movement speed. Uh, or e, his devour, they got rid of the movement speed when he eats his uh, teammate, which that's not really going to affect much, I think, in top lane. But so support, I think that's gonna it's a, it's overlooked a lot. Um, so I think that might make some changes in support. I still think he'll be picked because devour is still a pretty broken ability. But that's that's the big change I see for him in this last patch. I, th I think the big thing for him is thick, the thick skin change, where they lowered the gray health restored over time. Mm -hmm. um, we saw him in the top lane be such an early game monster, uh, and I don't think we're going to see that as much with the E change, because he's going to lose a lot of that tankiness that allowed him to escape with a sliver of health and a double kill in his pocket. Yeah, that's... Uh... Hard to argue with that. I you know I hate playing versus him. Um, he's my go-to support um, when I get auto-filled. It's going to be nasty. Um, Graves got some changes too. Um, the only jungler from last split that I could see that impacting is uh, Trufflesaurus. He loves Graves back from uh, the first time when he got reworked originally. Um, but I don't know. Yeah, I'm I'm hoping with a little little buff to Graves, we'll see him more more in the jungle, and hopefully we have some more aggressive early junglers instead of the big Sejuani's all the time, and get some more explosive fights. Well, I mean, a a big nerf coming to you, Ace, is Rise, where his cost uh, in his tier one E went up by twenty. I mean, that's a that's going to be a huge hit for you, isn't it? Yeah. Um, Rise is Rise is such a hard champion to talk about because he's honestly one of the best champions in the game. But if you look at his win rates, they're like forty percent versus anyone that's meta. Um, so it's hard to even like compare what a nerf like that actually does to him. I know that they reverted the changes to him on. Uh, the PBE, they're going to do a pretty massive rework. Um, and I honestly might be staying away from him until that rework comes out. Um. Well, let me let me ask you, Shaken, uh, while, while we're on the subject of major changes, Vi, uh, it's looking like she's getting a whole lot more sustain, uh, uh, top play ability, taking her out of the jungle possibly. What what are your thoughts on that? I've always been one to try, uh, to try to think outside the box, bring a new champion into the top lane, uh, just test some stuff out. And I did try Vi a long time ago. Um, I think she she could be viable, <laughs> pun, pun included. No, no. Um, but her her E gives a wave clear pretty easily, um, and she has some good gank assist so when the jungler comes she could set up the gank pretty easily and with being a fighter with conqueror I, I could see her in the top lane yeah no, that's true um i don't know many junglers that play vi currently um but i know alan z tardis is very very happy about these changes just for solo queue as that's one of his main champs um the biggest change, personally, for me, this split and this patch is Archangel Staff. Um, as we talked about a little bit earlier, most of the mid laners like to play wave clear champs, and the, with the mana changes coming, that'll be impact it. But right now, they just reduce the bonus AP from Archangel Staff from one from three percent to one percent, which is a pretty big nerf if you're investing that huge amount of gold into it before you have the tier fully stacked. Um, if there's, it's like 
a 20 to 30 a AP nerf for people that don't really pay attention to the patch notes. So that'll be interesting to see who's still first items, Archangels. Yeah, I don't, I don't foresee it being picked much. That's that's way too big of a change. Uh, I think it's gonna pretty much disappear out of the meta. Yeah, once it um, upgrades to Seraphs, the AP comes back, but that's gonna take, you know, that's gonna be till twenty minutes. You'll be sitting on a tier for an extra eight. Yeah. Well, I know in the position that I'm in, I'm real excited for this trinket change. I always felt like I was being penalized. Once, uh, if I completed quest um, before nine, uh, which is which is pretty standard, I guess, it, depending on how what what you're looking at in that lane. But uh, sweeping lens, I always felt like I was being punished because I needed to switch to it, um, and it just wasn't effective. But I'm very excited for Oracle's alteration. Yeah, I agree. Um, it honestly felt like. Like like a big nerf. If you, like you went back to lane, if you're eight and a half, you go back to base. You have to just get screwed. Um, you yeah. can't upgrade. You have to wait until you go back again to get the sweeper. And if the other support has better timing or half a level up on you, it felt pretty bad. Um, I think Riot could do a better job on trinkets overall. Um, just being a little bit more clear with how the swap process works. I know that. Um, Personally, it's confusing when you're switching to a blue trinket from a yellow trinket um, that the cooldown doesn't happen. So like, if you have two trinkets or one for yellow, you can just switch to blue and you'll be able to use a blue trinket right away. But if you try to switch to a red trinket, you'll get the full cooldown. So it's pretty much just saying you have to toss your wards somewhere for no reason just so you don't get that cooldown. Yeah, I also like the changes to the home start um, that they've they've put in, where it slows down as soon as you hit tier two towers. Um, I, I don't feel like I have to worry about a blitz or a Morgana jumping out of a bush just because I took an extra three seconds to uh, purchase. Yeah, it, it'll be interesting to see if that has impact in um, the LCS or not. I know some teams were doing uh, invades. Uh, Northern Storm specifically uh, Option 12 did some invades earlier in the split that actually got them punished pretty heavily um, so I'll have to play a few more games on it before I actually see if home starts having an impact or not um, does anyone else have anything about the patch notes or should we move on let's up on up Let's go on. All right. We'll be right back. All right. And this episode of Let's Talk About the League is brought to you by the Simple Soymen. That is a local soy foods company in the greater Milwaukee area. And uh, they provide bakery goods and nutritious other soy items for the Milwaukee area. Once again, that is the Simple Soymen that can be found in and around Milwaukee, Madison, and Chicago. All right. Um, so with that, we have the split, the week one preview coming up. Um, we have Team Blitzkrieg going versus Northern Storm. Um, the first main part about that is that the mid and support for Northern Storm are actually sitting out this week. Um, prior issue, prior commitment issues. So it'll be kind of hard to tell what Northern Storm actually brings to the table, despite what happens this week. What do you guys think of this matchup? Even without the uh, substitute situation, uh, it's it's very exciting with this matchup because with the amount of work that Northern Storm put in last split, where we would see their mid laner going up against their his support and his ADC from the last split. So maybe some inside information might have been exchanged there. Uh, both of them incredible players, but uh, I think that would have played into it in favor of Team Blitzkrieg, and probably because of that, I would have given it to them. That and I have no idea about washed up top laner, a spicy hot meme, or Ex uh, Exilia. Right. 
yeah, I'm, so I'm gonna I'm gonna second that. I'm I'm not I don't know all that much about the Northern Storm team besides the mid laner who's not even gonna be in. Uh, so that kind of draws a blank and playing with Goonstomp and Chaos last split. I know they're both very consistent and Goon is a a straight hard carry and I see him pulling his team through. Yeah, that's for sure. Um, the only only experience I have with the top laner and AD carry for Northern Storm is they ended up winning um, the King of the Hill back in March. Uh, but they only ended up playing one game, so it was hard to tell. Um, I know I personally think that Blitz will probably take this series, but I guess we'll have to wait and see. Uh, and it's this the, this is interesting because this really isn't an indicator on how Northern Storm will perform the rest of the split. So we're kind of getting another week to, to, to chew on exactly how they're going to perform. Yeah. Oh, it's it's impossible to say, but these uh, the three points that are floating around for this best of two could have a, a huge impact on the rest of the split. Um, like if Blitzkrieg is able to pull off a two zero and get three points, you know that could be the, just the push they need to get a better seating for playoffs, or this could knock out Northern Storm already. So we, they, either team could pull it off, or either team could uh, play super well the rest of the split and get a punished or rewarded for it. A very vague answer, I know. Um, <laughs> uh, the second set is Option 12 versus White Wolf Gaming. Um, supposed to be a very hyped matchup in Split 1. Um, no, Split 2, excuse me. Um, but it didn't seem like White Wolf showed up that week, as the White Wolf players said themselves. Um, I wonder how it's going to go this time. There's lots of uh, insider information going between... Uh, the players on both teams. Uh, I'm I'm excited to see this new White Wolf. Um, White Wolf has been a perennial, unchanging uh, force in the LCUS, and we're we're finally seeing a big shakeup. But it's a shakeup that's in good hands because they kept two of their strongest players. They picked up Primed and who was incredible on more cowbell the last split, uh, and. Uh, it's been a whole split since we've seen Salsa or Tilted Snorlax, so who knows what's going to happen. Yeah, I always think the first week's going to be hard to judge a team, but this looks to be uh, the the match I'm most interested in with a lot of the, the players being friends and the opposite teams of each other, so it'll be a good one to see a little beef go in and you know say my team's better than yours at the beginning of the split. Yeah, and, and even the added, uh, there's a second set of friends in this match, um, opposed to the ones that were in it the second split. Uh, I know Menards is friends with uh, Salsa Salud and Tilted Snorlax, so that'll be fun too. It's really going to be a grudge match. Uh, I think White Wolf, Wolf uh, isn't going to be able to pull it out though, just given the amount of synergy that Option 12 still has, and that's the first week, but I'm looking forward to being proven wrong. And then, I second that. Yeah. And then uh, the third set uh, of games is between Team Phoenix and more Cowbell. Um, yeah, those two teams are very hyped up by most people that I've spoken to. What do you guys think of this matchup? Uh, personally, I think this is going to be our match of the night. Uh, option, uh, sorry, uh, more Cowbell. Right now, they've got Shaden, who was premier bot laner for uh, Option 12 last split, and now he's playing his main role. Uh, I've already bragged enough on Brandon and Mr. Pig. Uh, Hickey, just incredible support, and I think we're going to see a lot of that come to the mid lane where he's going to be able to provide that assistance in the top and the roam bot. Uh, very exciting. I think we're going to see them come to force. And Flay Matthews, don't know anything about you, bud, but I'm excited to see you play. Uh, and with... Team Phoenix, uh, it's just it, they got an all-star cast. Uh, Amaya Chan with White Wolf was wonderful. Von Hohenheim, uh, I could not sing the praises of the Icebird Master anymore. Uh, uh, Zoe as well. I hope we get to see that come out. It's always a treat seeing you play that. Uh, Port Swimmer, Alon Z, just quality, folks, quality. 
Yeah, I'm I'm interested in this game as well. Um, both both bot lanes have a good chemistry together, and I've played with both of them a lot. First split with uh, Bort Swimmer, and I've done a lot of solo queue, duo queue with Brandana. Um, I think whichever way the bot lane uh, shapes out, whichever one gets the lead, that's the team that's going to win. Yeah, um, I know I played verse. I played on the team with uh, Brandana and Mr. Pig. Um, the first split, great players, and we played uh, the finals versus Port Swimmer, and uh, yeah, he was able to hold his own versus Brandana and Mr. Pig. So it will definitely be a good matchup in the bot lane. Uh, I'd probably give it to. I think I'm going to give it to Phoenix just because they're my number one team for the split. So I think I have to vote for them. Um, and then Team Take the Lantern is on bye week this week. Uh, and a few of the people from that team may be joining the casters at the start of the day. But we'll have to wait till week two to see, uh, see that team. Um, but yeah, anyone else have anything for week one or should we move on to a few questions let's keep it moving all right cool um uh, so a question that we tend to ask most of the guests on this show uh shaken not stirred uh what's your favorite type of champion to watch um i like the flashy i like the flashy plays um the outplays the 1v9s um so i'll just go you know one in each role I think right now in top lane, Aurelia, she's probably my favorite champion to watch in top lane right now. Uh, jungle, I've always been a big fan of Lee Sin. Uh, the kicks, it's all about the kicks. Mid lane, I really, really like Echo. Yeah, He has a lot of unique combinations he can do when they changed his ult going back through his... done area with that it makes a lot of cool outplays um, and then adc wise i love vein but kaisa is is making a big presence in the bot lane but those two are my two favorite adcs to watch right now and support is insignificant <laughs> you mind your mouth child. <laughs> and with that uh we'll move on to the next question um so who has the best new summoner name in the league uh, and for those of you that can't see the list that we're looking at uh, the new players are washed up top laner a spicy hot meme uh, Big Zaya? Sure. Nebulon, Flay Matthews uh, Gregosaurus Rex and Salsa Sloot same player as first split new name this time uh, what do you guys think? Sig what do you think? What's the best new name? I think they're all better than Shake and Not Stirred. Hey. Everyone loves James Bond, all right? <laughs> 007. Uh no, I'm a uh, uh, these these are all very uh memeful meme filled. Uh, Nebulon. I want to know where you came from that from. I know Nebulon's in a lot of science fiction and stuff so I'd, I'd love to hear the backstory on that one, but in in terms of personal flavor, Gregosaurus Rex. I like it. Hopefully uh Nebulon wins his series and you're able to ask him on the desk. Uh, what about you, Shaken Not Stirred? Who do you think has the best new name? Uh, Gregosaurus Rex. Is... I like dinosaurs, so Gregosaurus Rex. <laughs> Fair. I think it's clever too, so. Yeah, that's, uh, that's a good name. Uh, he changed it recently from uh, Hell Bizzle, I believe. Uh, I may be wrong. Um, for me, I think I'm going to go with Flay Matthews. Uh, the first time I saw that name, it... Uh, it made me laugh, and uh, as a Packers fan, uh, definitely definitely doesn't hurt to <laughs> go with that. Um, all right, uh, this question is for Shaking Not Stirred. It comes from uh, the loving audience. Uh, the question is, uh, with being one of the best, if not the best top laner in the first two splits, who was your toughest matchup from those splits? Uh, Feel free to that's... hurt feelings. Um, so I'll, I'll answer this in, in the first split, I would say Great Beard of Orden 
was probably my toughest matchup. I played him the most and got a little beef with with him. Uh, we're good friends and we have a little competitive nature against each other. Second split, I'm going to give it to Prowler. Uh, he definitely, he's a newer newer player. He's one of my friends from middle school and high school. So I know him quite well and he's he's more recent to more people I know in League of Legends. And he's definitely made a lot of improvements uh, in the last couple of splits, and we put I, when I played him in the finals, it was I was getting a little frustrated with with him as he knew his role and he just kind of kept me there and I couldn't do much. Um, but one game I don't remember who I played against, but it was in the semifinals against White Wolf, and I went against an Atrax when I was playing Clet, and I got whooped. And whoever that Atrax was, that was probably the most frustrating game that I've played in either split. Yeah, uh, RTC, I think, uh, he has some very crazy picks. And that was, that was probably the craziest. It's uh, not crazy if it works. And it worked. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's true. Uh, he even pulled out Heimerdinger earlier that split. Um, all right. Um, few, two more questions. Uh, what's the biggest surprise from the LCUS going into the third split? Uh, I asked for clarification on this question. And um, it's any way you want to take it is what they're looking for. Um, personally, from the past two splits, um, one of the things that was biggest surprise was that teams with um, super talented players sometimes just weren't able to pull the teamworks together um, that really showed with uh yeah I'm just gonna I'll leave it at that but what do you what about you guys any big surprises um I yes um I agree with you wholeheartedly on team potential if I remember correctly, at the beginning of Split 2, I called for Triple Strike to take it a lot farther and harder than they did. Um, with three of the players from Triple Strike now being on Team Phoenix, uh, I hate to be cliche, but I'm looking for that that rising from the ashes story from them. Uh, and I, I really think we're going to see it this time. Yeah. What were you shaking out, Sir? Any large surprises? Um, yeah, I'm going to add on to the team teams uh, with potential not not working out um no i don't i don't know how those other teams went obviously because i wasn't on them but it i don't know if it's you know a, a leadership aspect if they don't have a true shot collar or bickering amongst the team you know if something goes wrong then they kind of just don't talk and stick their heads in in the ground and just play out the game yeah. That's one of the most frustrating things that I found is, you know, team teams fighting amongst themselves kind of beats themselves more than the other team beats them. That's for sure. Um, I'm, I'm going to throw out another surprise. Uh, seeing Tarek Jungle come out twice, once <laughs> both splits, uh, that was a surprise. Um, all right, and the last question... Um, What's an acceptable level of toxicity, uh, quote unquote? So bad manners, um, etc. Um, the asker also added that they don't really see much of an issue with like good nature, good natured like jokes and stuff like that. But people have different tol tolerances. Um, personally, I think that as long as everyone's having fun, there's nothing wrong with that. Uh, question marks in chat. Uh, occasionally, or flashing a remote, it's no big deal. But like, if you're up 15 kills and you can tell the other teams, kinda, kinda done with the situation, you probably shouldn't be, BMing them too hard. Anyone else have any thoughts on toxicity? Um, yeah. As as for the teams, um, a little different than solo solo duo queue and and flex. It all depends on how well you know the person and you know how much they can handle. Um, so, you know, if it's one of your good friends and you say, oh, you're feeding and just messing with them, 
Um, I find that, I think that's fine, but, you know, constant pings and it, it all depends on the tone of the person and how well you know them, I think. But yeah. a couple pings, question marks, you know, saying, what are you doing? Or keeping the the chat to not as much swearing and try to stay level-headed, I think. But toxicity is is very touchy. Um, I, I, I want to agree, but if, if I'm playing with friends, I'm not really worried about a level of toxicity because even if the other side turns super toxic, it doesn't bother me as much because I have my friends there. We're laughing about it. It turns into a joke. If I'm playing in ranked and I'm in solo queue, um, I, I follow a very strict code of conduct. If, if it's someone on my team and they're going hard Things aren't working well for them. They get a little mouthy, but they still keep playing the best they can. I, I don't get as upset. But the second a racial slur comes in, uh, any kind of slur, period, uh, it's a hard report for me. Uh, no ifs, ands, or buts. Um, just, just right off the bat, if it's it's the intent that I pull from it is really what gets me. Yeah, yeah, I, I I'm very against the racial slurs as well. Um. There's a limit, and that's that's I agree. That's that's my limit. Yeah, for sure. We are uh, definitely all trying to be friends and not have any insults that can't be taken back. Uh, in the LCUS, of course, uh, we have rules against bad manners and breaking the rules and all this stuff. Um, with warnings, of course, like if you some things are instantly punishable, but like. If you do a little bit of BM to your friend and they say, could you not do that again? Uh, that's good, too. Um, but I think with that, uh, that's going to wrap it up for tonight. Uh, I really appreciate you taking the time out of your day, Shaken Not Sir, to join us. And um, as always, Sigtal Lord and I will be back next week with episode two of Let's Talk About the League. Thank you very much for listening.